Hello and welcome back to Game of Trades, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. This video is going to be focused on the S&P 500 and more importantly, on this head and shoulder pattern that we're potentially seeing develop on the S&P 500 here. A lot of people are talking about this. We have a left shoulder, we have a head and potentially the right shoulder that's forming here with quite a well-defined neckline here. Now this is a typical topping pattern. It happens a lot whether that's on indices, stocks, commodities. It's a sign of distribution by strong holders in the market and typically the rule is that once you get a break of the neckline, you can measure out the target by measuring the distance from the top of the head to the neckline, so that's around 10% in 2022, and you'll get that same move once the neckline is broken. So that's 10% from the neckline. That could take us down to 3,950 points. So I can understand why a lot of people are concerned over this pattern. As we're gonna discuss in this episode, we had a similar pattern back in 2007 that really marked the top of the bull run before the great financial crisis. We're gonna be talking about this pattern in detail and of course, many other factors that we're currently looking at to determine our strategy on US equities. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to smash that like button as hard as you can and push out our vision of the market to as many people as possible. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, we make these videos multiple times a week. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, I don't want anyone to panic during this video. We're of course gonna be taking a look at this pattern in detail and in an objective manner. But of course, there's a lot more that goes into predicting the market than just patterns of price. Now, technicals can help a great deal for timing the markets and getting the right entry and exit opportunities, but this is by no means the only thing we pay attention to. So that's the first thing I wanna get out the way before we dive deep into what this pattern actually means. And we're gonna take a look at a typical example of a head and shoulder pattern, jump over to a daily chart, and we have this pattern of the 2007 top. This is a textbook head and shoulder pattern. You've got the left shoulder, the head that goes a little bit higher, and then a small right shoulder with a well-defined neckline. And once broken, you get a powerful sell-off. Now, what you typically want to see when you have a head and shoulder pattern is on the moves down. So when, so the move down from the left shoulder, the move down from the head, and the move down from the right shoulder, you wanna have rising volume. You wanna see a lot of conviction behind that move. So rising volume on the moves down, that's typical head and shoulder topping price action. And that's exactly what we had in 2007. And if you look at the moves up, forming the left shoulder, the head and the right shoulder, you can see you have often declining volume or low volume showing you less conviction behind that move up. So again, in 2007, you had a textbook head and shoulder pattern being confirmed by volume. Why do we look at volume? Because it tells you whether you're currently seeing distribution. If there's a lot of volume on the move down, it means, you're, it means there's a lot of selling pressure, a lot of distribution, and that sets the stage up for a downtrend and weaker price action. And just for educational purposes, I just quickly want to show you what accumulation looks like, right? We, we talked about distribution where you have rising volume on the move down. So what does accumulation look like? Here we have the energy sector, so XLE, and you can see what, ha and you can see what happens when you have a move up. You have a rising volume. And if you were a member with us on our website at gameoftreats.net, you'll know we were talking about this very extensively. The behavior in XLE showed a lot of accumulation, rising price, rising volume. And then on the moves down, you can see here wedge pattern, you have declining volume. So 
the exact opposite that we saw towards the top of the 2007 market throughout 2020 and 2021 on it on the energy sector we had huge accumulation price action so hopefully this adds a little bit to your technical knowledge if you're learning something new with these videos don't forget to click on the like button there really is a lot of effort and research that goes into making these videos and that's all for the price of just a couple of seconds to give us a like now xle is one of our long-term investment ideas on our service at gameoftrades.net we're massively bullish long term but short term i think that we'll be making a local top here and there'll be a lot of accumulation opportunities for the energy sector at lower prices and of course we'll be looking at that very carefully throughout the next few months if you're interested in doing that with us test out our free trial by clicking on the link down below so let's take a look at the head and shoulder pattern on the s p 500 in 2022 does it follow the same volume characteristics that we had throughout 2007 i'm going to take a look at that very quickly here we have the neckline we have the left shoulder rising here with a slightly declining volume then you've got the right shoulder being formed here slightly rising volume although if we zoom in a little bit here you can see the very bottom of this move you didn't really have rising volumes so that's a little bit different to what we had throughout 2007 then here we have the head being formed we don't really have declining volume we have quite elevated volume as the head is forming and then here we have rising volume on this move down we've had a powerful high conviction move down right here throughout January. So we definitely have some volume characteristics of a head and shoulder pattern here, but not as beautiful as we had them in 2007. And that's where I quickly want to discuss failed head and shoulder patterns because that can happen. Here we have a few examples of head and shoulder patterns that actually played out here in 2011, for example, nice head and shoulder pattern nice neckline once it was broken you had a big move down same thing here in 2012 small head and shoulder pattern led to a sizable move down on the stock market but look at this pattern here in 2010 you also had a nice well-defined head and shoulder pattern with a left shoulder a head and a right shoulder it broke down but immediately snapped back up so that's an example of a failed head and shoulder pattern back in 2010. And if we go back even further back in the 1990s, I'm just giving a few examples here. These are not the only head and shoulder patterns that we've had, but this example in 1999, again, a left shoulder, the head and the right shoulder. And it actually ended up being a continuation pattern, just a period of consolidation that led to the final big blow off top in 1999. Now, it might not look like much, but here from the bottom right here to the top of the market in 2000, that was a 23% move. And that's without considering the fact that the tax sector was just massively outperforming. So if you were in the tax sector throughout this period, you made absolutely monstrous gains. Okay, so now that I've given you the facts we're going to quickly discuss the probability of this actually playing out for a bull market top and triggering a true move down to these levels here at around 4,000 points and possibly even lower. A lot of people are calling for this to be the top of the bull run we've seen since 2009. And, and considering the hawkish Fed that we've had, a lot of people, a lot of investors are concerned that this is the beginning of the bear market. So let's talk about that. And that's where I want to put these key moving averages here on the S&P 500. So we have the 50 day, we have the 150 and the 200 day moving average. Now, why am I doing this? Because looking at all of these moving averages together can give you a good idea of what the momentum of the price action is like and whether we're seeing a lot of indecisiveness 
from market participants, whether there's a lot of uncertainty and perhaps a change in market behavior. And I'm going to show you, for example, what was happening back in 2007. You had the 50 day moving average cross down below the 100. And then as the right shoulder was developing here, you had a lot of cross downs of these moving averages showing you there was a change in character of the bull market relative to what was happening throughout this period here in 2006 and the beginning of 2007. And we can go back to 1999 and 2000. And you can see throughout this entire period here as the markets were topping you had a lot of indecisiveness in the key moving averages. This is just not the same look that we have today in 2022. We still have all the key moving averages in the right place with the 50 above the 100 above the 150 above the 200. That's showing you that despite this recent correction, there's still a lot of momentum. There's still a lot of conviction behind this move. Now, can this change? Absolutely. And if we have more volatility in the next few weeks, that might start to look like a real topping pattern with some change in character in the moving averages. But right now, that's just not what we have here. For now, this is just a typical retest of the 200 day moving average and nothing more from a technical standpoint. Retests of the 200 day moving average happen very often during a bull run and are often very good buying opportunities, right? So you can see here throughout the 2012 run, 2014 retest here. The last time we had such a retest was in 2020, in June 2020. Now think about what this means, right? A lot of investors have a strategy of buying the dip at the 200 day moving average. And we haven't seen a retest since June 2020. So I think there's a lot of cash on the sidelines that's been waiting to buy the dip. And we just have not had this type of opportunity. This is really the first big dip that we've had on this run. So I think this dip is going to get bought. If we take a look at the macro, we take a look at bond yields, the yield curve, we take a look at sentiment. None of the evidence we have right now is pointing towards this being the top of the bull run. And I think the resumption of this 200 day moving average can actually be quite powerful and quite consequent. We'll see if we have a little bit more volatility, perhaps an undercut of that low, but our conviction is that we'll eventually be resuming higher. And if we quickly want to get some targets on that, we can take the Fib extension from this move down here. And you can see that gives us a couple of targets here at the 1.618 Fib projection and at the two and 1.618 Fib projections that sit at around 5,200 points and just about at 5,500 points. So again, from where we are, that's a 15 and 23% move up. Keep in mind how absolutely massive that is. That is three times greater than the average annual return of the S&P 500. So this is absolutely an opportunity that we'll be taking advantage of. Of course, that is just our opinion, our convictions. And that's exactly what the goal of our YouTube channel and our website at gameoftrades.net is. We give you guys our research, the opportunities that we see in the markets across asset classes, across different time frames, And then we follow up on these trades, on these investments every step of the way. Now, that's about all I wanted to cover in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to click on that like button, smash the subscribe button if you haven't already. Now, in the meantime, I wish you good luck on your trading and see you next time.